Good morning, everybody. It's 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We celebrate today the memorial of St. Alfonso Muttatu Paratu. The liturgy of today in India focuses on this wonderful saint. Now, um, I want to tell you a little bit more about her life because very often uh, we are not well aware of the lives of the saints, especially the saints from our own country, from India. Saint Alfonso was born in a place called Kuda Malur in the Diocese of Shanganashari in India. She was born on the 19th of August 1910 and she was the last of five children. Her mother Maria gave birth to her prematurely in the eighth month of pregnancy. This was as a result of a fright that her mother received when during her sleep a snake wrapped itself around her waist. And then after she was born a few days later on the 28th of July or 20th of August, she was baptized and she received the name Anna Kuti, which uh, in Malayalam simply means a small Anna. Suffering and sadness was hers from her childhood. We know her mother died three months after she was born. And as a baby, Anna Kuti was first taken in by her grandparents. Her grandmother was a very pious and charitable woman and she transmitted the faith and the love for prayer to little Anna. Anna Kuti received her first Holy Communion on the 11th of November 1917 at the age of seven. This day was so etched in her memory that writing to her spiritual father many years later, she said this, Already from the age of seven, I was no longer mine. I was totally dedicated to my divine spouse. Your reverence knows it well. In the same year, at the age of seven, she began to attend elementary school, where she also established a very sincere friendship with all her classmates, many of whom, whom were Hindus. Anna then went to live with her aunt, Anna Murikal, to whom her mother, before she died, had entrusted her as her adoptive mother. But her aunt was a demanding woman and at times we know to be even violent. She demanded obedience from Anna Kuti in everything she did. Anna had grown to love the Carmelite nuns who lived in the monastery close by, a love not shared entirely by her aunt. It was here in the monastery that she would spend long hours of prayer at the altar. Seeing this, her aunt was determined to get her married and um, to end this desire that she had to be a religious nun. Now, in order to prevent her aunt from getting her married, she deliberately placed her foot in a heap of burning embers. In her own words, she says, my marriage was arranged when I was 13 years old. What had I to do to avoid it? She says, I prayed that night and then she said an idea came to me. If my body were to be a little disfigured, no one would want me. Oh, she says, how I suffered. I offered all for my great intention. But the uh, attempts to get her married did not stop with even the mistress of formation in the convent conniving with her family to get her married. And this is what she said, Oh, the vocation which I received, a gift of my good God. God saw the pain of my soul in those days. God distanced the difficulties and established me in this religious state. It was Father James Murican, her confessor, who directed her towards Franciscan spirituality and put her in contact with the congregation of the Franciscan Clarist. The period from 1930 to 1935 was marked by grave illness in her life. About one week after the beginning of her novitiate, she had a hemorrhage from the nose and the eyes and wounds on her leg. The illness deteriorated to such a point that they thought she would die. Heaven came to the rescue of the Holy Novice. During a novena to the servant of God, Father Kuriyako Elias Shavra, 
a Carmelite who today is a saint, she was miraculously and instantaneously cured. Commencing her novitiate once again, she wrote the following proposals in her spiritual diary. She says, I do not wish to act or speak according to my inclinations. Every time I fail, I will do penance. I want to be careful never to reject anyone. I will only speak sweet words to others. I want to control my eyes with rigor. I will ask pardon of the Lord for every little failure and I will atone for it through penance. No matter what my suffering may be, I will never complain and if I have to undergo any humiliation, I will seek refuge in the Sacred Heart of Jesus. St. Alphonsa was fully professed as a nun on the 12th of August 1936, the Feast of St. Clair. She confided in her sister Elizabeth when she was only 12 years old. She said, Jesus is my only spouse and none other. Jesus, however, wished to lead his spouse, the spouse of his, to perfection through a life of suffering. She says, I made my perpetual profession on the 12th of August and from that time, it seems, I was entrusted with a part of the cross of Christ. There are abundant occasions of suffering. I have a great desire to suffer with joy, she says. It seems that my spouse wishes to fulfill this desire. Painful illnesses plagued her life. Typhoid, she had fever, double pneumonia, and the most serious of all was a dramatic nervous shock, the result of a fright on seeing a thief during the night of the 18th of October in 1940. Her state of psychic incapacity lasted for about a year during which she was even unable to read or to write. In every situation, Sister Alfonso always maintained a great reservation and charitable attitude towards her fellow sisters, silently undergoing all her sufferings. In 1945, she had a violent outbreak of illness. A tumour which had spread throughout her organs and finally transformed the final years of her life into a continuous agony of pain and suffering. Gastroenteritis and liver problems caused violent convulsions and vomiting up to even 40 times a day. And this is what she said. I feel that the Lord has destined me to be an oblation, a sacrifice of suffering. I consider a day in which I have not suffered as a day lost to me. Sister Alfonso quietly and joyfully brought her earthly journey to a close in the convent of the Franciscan Claris on the 28th of July, 1946. Forty years after her death, she was beatified by Pope John Paul II in 1986 when he visited India and in particular in Kotayam and in recognition of the numerous miracles through her intercessory prayers that were made, she was on that occasion beatified. Pope Benedict XVI authorized Sister Alphonse's name for canonization on the 1st of June 2007. On October 12, 2008, Pope Benedict XVI announced her canonization at a ceremony at St. Peter's Square and she was elevated to the sainthood on October 12, 2008 by Pope Benedict XVI. We pray to this beautiful saint from India. May she bless us today on her feast day and inspire many who undergo suffering to bear it joyfully for our Lord. Today on this day, I want to pray for all of you who are sick, all of you who are struggling with health, especially those of you who have serious and perhaps even life-threatening illnesses. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord protect you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Share it with your friends and share the joy of the saints in India that they may inspire our young people and inspire all of us to follow Christ more closely. God bless you. 
God be with you and to all our donors to the Love Joy Hope Foundation. Thank you.